Hey guys, it's HCG Charmed, and I am vlogging in response to Miss HCG Fashionista's um, vlog that she had, and I think that that was a wonderful vlog, um, Dana. That was the best idea ever to put this out here, and I'm so glad that you did this because... That's actually what I've been um, dealing with all week is trying to help others to think about the protocol and think about the maintenance end and think about the whole story, not just the diet end of it, but getting from the start to the finish of the protocol. And... If we just delve into just the eating aspect of it, we're going to be going in circles over and over and over again. Because until we deal with why we got to where we did um, or where we are, if we're just if you guys are just starting the HCG diet, if we don't figure out why we got there, we'll never be able to succeed. And that's what the protocol, I think, really helps with. It really helps you deal with learning how to eat healthy, which might have been your reason why you were where, where you were at was just because you didn't know how to eat healthy. Um, or it could have been a food addiction, or it could have been many, many different things. But until you delve into that, until you realize what that is, um, the who, what, when, and where <laughs> of it all, um, you won't be successful. So, I mean, you, we can sit here and talk on YouTube for hours about how to be pop on the eating aspect of Dr. Simeon's protocol. But the important thing is how to start and how to finish Dr. Simeon's protocol. So I think that it's great that Dana brought up that maybe we should all do a video on, especially like um, people like Steph Universe um, or So Called Plum or some of the ones that have maintained successfully for a certain amount of time who have done well in the P3 and P4. Because there is not enough out there in P3 and P4 and that's the most important part of the protocol as far as I'm concerned um, because that's where most people fail. So we need to get an open forum going, and Miss Fashionista, um, I think, is starting this. So that is great. Um, if we can just um, try to sit back and think of some of the things, some of the obstacles that got us to where we were or where we are so that and maybe tell us or tell each other how we got over that obstacle. One of the fears that I had to overcome was going out to eat. Um, I would actually not even go out to eat with my husband because I was worried about overeating or I was worried about uh, my calorie intake and whatnot so I just chose not to go a lot of times. <clears throat> Then I finally, um, like I said, it's a matter of getting over your fears and then trying to find a solution for that. And my solution for that was um, I would always go online and look at the nutritional value of whatever restaurant he chose. And then I would figure out what I was going to eat before I even went. That way I felt comfortable knowing, and then I always made sure, and I still make sure when I talk to the waiter as to, you know, I want it baked or I, I don't want any seasoning on it. You know, you're basically paying for the food. You're paying them to cook your food. Don't feel bad about asking for it to be done the way that you want it because you're paying for it. So... I had to sort of get over that, too, because I always thought, oh, I don't want to be a pain. I don't want to be one of those people, you know. But you know what? You're paying for it. You might as well get it right and get it the way that you want to get it done. Um, <clears throat> the other thing that I would do, too, is that I would um, ask for a to-go box 
up front. So that way, um, you know, as soon as they brought the meal, I'd say, could I please have a to-go, you know, I actually asked for it when I, they brought the water, could I have a to-go to box? Um, and then as soon as I got my meal, if I knew that, because most of the meals that you get in a restaurant are, you might as well say for calorie wise, it's half of what that is. So, so 90% of the restaurants that I go to, I take the to-go box right away. I put the food in the to-go box as soon as they get it to me. Cause that was the other thing is that if I had the food in front of me, I would sit there and nibble at it. I would, I mean, I just... I know I don't have that self-control. I know that if I'm sitting there talking, I'm going to just take another bite and another bite and another bite. <laughs> I, I mean, I that's one of my issues. So I get rid of that right away by just putting that in the to-go box and putting it off to the side. And that way I do not have that issue of having to eat it. Obsessing or... <clears throat> thinking about food all day long. That was another one. How I got over that basically was in the morning when I get up, the first thing I do, or at night, just depends on what my schedule is. The first thing I do is I get on my fitness pal and I write down what I'm going to eat for the day. That way I don't have to think about it all day long because I know I'm in my calorie range. I know I have got enough protein. I know I've got enough of everything that I need. Otherwise, yeah, I would be sitting there going, okay, what am I going to have for lunch? Or what am I going to have for dinner? Oh my gosh. Uh, you know, I, I would worry about it all day long. I would probably obsess about it. So that's how I take care of that problem is I just get on my fitness pal in the morning I'm one, too, that I eat a lot of the same things every day. Like every morning, I have an omelet. Pretty much, excuse me, pretty much every morning. Um, for lunch or dinner, a lot of times I have a chicken salad. Um, I'm not one that has to have a different thing every day, so I guess that's sort of helpful to me because I don't th have to think about food much because I know now what to eat pretty much every day but but it does help a lot for me to stay in check and keep my protein where I want to keep it my carbohydrates where I want to keep it to maintain by doing a journal every morning that was really a hard thing to accept that basically I am going to have to do that for the rest of my life um I might not have to do it for the rest of my life I don't know but I'm, I'm not there yet, and I won't be there for a long time. Um, I have to journal. If I don't journal, I'm going to obsess about the food. I'm going to obsess about how I'm, you know, what I'm going to do. Or I'll do the opposite and not care about it, and then I'll really be in trouble. And I've learned from my past mistakes <clears throat> that I won't do that. You know, I journal. I make sure that I take care of myself. And that's one of the things, too, is learning how to put yourself first. And you have to do that in order to make a healthy lifestyle change. Weighing yourself every day and keeping yourself accountable, I think, is the only way that I could succeed in my maintenance. I never really looked at the scale as my, my chain. You know, I always looked at the scale as my freedom. The scale gives me the freedom to make choices me the freedom to correct. Um, if I didn't have the scale, I would feel I, I would feel so insecure because I wouldn't know where I was. Um, when I got into trouble was when I, I didn't weigh. Um, like I said before, I went through a relapse. I don't know if I told you guys or not, but. Um, Part of my story, too, was that I was adopted and I ended up finding out that I had a lot of diabetic issues and a lot of heart issues um, on my birth side. So that really frightened me and that was one of, the, one of my drivers as far as... Um, I, as far as getting healthy again was that it scared the hell out of me that 
I want to get in that healthy BMI. Well, I couldn't get in that healthy BMI. I, I was 143 and I could not get to my healthy BMI. So I felt like a failure. And during that time, I ended up just saying, I got frustrated and um, also during that time, my weight loss coach that I was working with ended up quitting, or not, she didn't quit, but she had grandchildren, so she decided that she didn't want to do it anymore. So I lost my um, support group and I felt like a failure because I couldn't, I mean, I tried for a year working out, changing my diet. I mean, I tried everything and I could not get into my healthy BMI. So how I dealt with that, I threw my scale away and I just said the heck with it. I gave up. I was frustrated. And for like four months, I didn't watch the scale. I went back to my old habits. I relapsed. And but the one good thing about that relapse is I learned from my mistakes. It was a negative thing in my life that I learned from that, that I I cannot give up that scale. That scale is what keeps me going. That scale is what keeps me going from not going up and from staying where I need to be or getting to where I need to be. So for me, that scale is, is my lifeline. That scale is what is going to get me to where I want to be. And I finally did make it. I am in a healthy BMI. Now I'm shooting for my goal of being in the middle of my BMI so um, that I'll have a little bit of leeway for my main my maintenance so that it's for basically for six months I want to keep my weight at that same weight and reset my metabolism, be it, you know, I'm not sure exactly how, how it works. Um, I'm still reading about the leptin, or I'm, I'm, I just got the book yesterday, actually. I haven't even touched it yet. Um, but be it the leptin response, be it the hypothalamus gland, be it, you know, from what I just read on a Harvard study um, with them saying that basically is if you keep your weight for six months at stable for six months, then it'll reset, you know. But every all the protocols that I've read about or researched have all said the same thing. You have to keep your weight at a certain level for an extended amount of time in order for your body to cooperate. And I'm praying to God that that is the fact and that in six months I won't be I won't have to, to, to get on the scale and I won't, you know, I will be able to relax and not feel so accountable for everything that goes in my mouth because my body will reset. But until I get there, I cannot give up that scale because that would be self-sabotaging myself. And I've learned from that <clears throat> relapse and I will not do that. Um, you know, maybe some people, you know, their issues are different. Maybe, um, they are over obsessing about the scale and they do need to have it taken away. I, I don't really know, but I just know for me, in order for me to keep myself accountable and for me to get to where I need to be and stay at where I want to be, I have to have my scale. And that's the only thing that's going to free my mind until I get to the point where I can let go of it. Does that make sense? I hope it makes sense. One of the other things that I did, like I said before, is I put everybody else's needs first before my own. And that was one of the things that my weight loss coach taught me is that <clears throat> I have to get over that. I have to put myself first as far as my mental health goes, and as far as um, making time for me to go and work out and have some me time. That me time is what got me through. And that me time is something I think that everybody needs 
even if it's just 20 minutes a day, take 20 minutes a day and just have time for you being something that you like to do, preferably something that's active because obviously that's going to help you in some sort. For me, it was giving myself that 20 minutes. <clears throat> well, I actually gave myself, I ended up giving myself an hour. I started off as 20 minutes and then I gave myself an hour every day to work out. That was my time to free my mind, my time to think and process my day, my time to just be me because I didn't have that for, for many, many years. And I think that is a real, um, something that's really going to help everyone succeed in, in their lives, um, in maintaining a healthy lifestyle is you have to give yourself some time. 